Hey everybody, in this video I am going to talk about gene conversion and I remember thinking that you know for a long time that this was a very very complicated phenomenon but hopefully after this uh, video you will you know not think it is that complicated at all. So essentially uh, gene conversion is when an allele, let's just take one allele, when one allele is converted to uh, another allele. And it's most easy, let's see, most easy to see where? Um, in products of meiosis. Most easy to see in products of meiosis. Okay, so what do I mean? So, well, let's take a hypothetical gene uh, with a, a, a gene called Q, and there is a big Q allele and a small Q allele. And we'll take a single individual, and let's look at this gene during uh, meiosis. So, or these two alleles of this gene during meiosis. And let's say this individual is heterozygous. So one big Q allele, one small Q allele. So back to introductory genetics, right? What does that mean? Well, if this is the beginning of meiosis, these alleles are found on homologous chromosomes. And the big Q allele is found on this chromosome. I can color the centromere in here. And the small q might be found over here. Now, okay, let's say this is at the beginning of meiosis. Now, what would happen next? Okay, so going back to, again, introductory genetics and introductory biology. So meiosis, what happens during the first stage of meiosis? The homologous chromosomes separate. So this one's gonna go this way. This one's gonna go that way. And we could even say, let's say this is spermatogenesis, right? So this is the primary spermatocyte. And then these will be the secondary spermatocytes. And it, we could even talk about old genesis. It doesn't really matter. So we got the two big Qs over here, the two little Qs over here. And after the next stage of meiosis, what happens? Well, the centromeres split. And we get four meiotic products. If we're talking about spermatogenesis, these would be the spermatids. And there are four of them. So... Two of the spermatids have the big Q allele, and two have the, the small Q allele. And that's what we would expect, you know, from an individual that is heterozygous for the big Q allele and the little Q allele, that half of the meiotic products would be big Qs and half would be little Qs. Now, sometimes if gene conversion occurs, well, what that means is, let's say two Q uh, and two big Q and two little Q are expected. Well, what if we saw three Q, big Q, and one little Q? Or one big Q and three little Q? Well, that would say, you know, let's say the three big, big Q, one little Q, that would say this little Q was somehow converted to the big Q. Or the other way, this one right here was converted to a little Q. So that is contrary to Mendelian genetics, right? contrary to what you've learned um, all through, you know, your introductory biology classes. And it occurs sometimes. Uh, and what it does occur, it's called gene conversion. And I'm going to try and explain to you how gene conversion works. We almost never see this. So four big Q and zero little Q, or the other way, zero big Q and four little Q. And I'm going to quickly explain why we, we would usually not expect to see something like that. So, so gene conversion, well, it results 
from, well, one mechanism that can cause it is the double strand break uh, repair by HR mechanism that we've covered in, or talked about in a couple of lectures. So in the first stage of meiosis, let's say, we have uh, a double strand break occurring in one of the homologous chromosomes. It could even be caused by SPO11 to initiate a crossover. And now that double strand break needs to be repaired. And let's say that double strand break happened really close to uh, the Q gene, even in the Q gene right here. So, this area right here near the double strand break would be affected by gene conversion, any alleles in this area. However, these over here, they're not part of the double strand break repair mechanism. These sister chromatids here and over here aren't part of this mechanism. So they're gonna, they're gonna come out of this process unscathed. Uh, uh, they're gonna look identical. Uh, to to how they look going into the process. They'll look like, uh, at the end of the process, they'll look like uh, what they look like going into the process because they're not involved in the mechanism. So no matter what, there's gonna be one big Q and one little Q coming out of meiosis. However, here, well, well, the big Qs and the little Qs, well, they could be converted to one or the other uh, because they're so close to the double strand break. So, okay, let's take a look at how how gene conversion works. So I'm going to cheat a little bit here because I'm pretty much already over time for lecture 18 videos. So let's assume the big Q allele, the difference between the big Q allele and the little Q allele for this gene is just a single point mutation. So the big Q allele has an AT base pair, and the, at that same position, the little Q allele has a GC base pair. And I have that diagrammed right here. So here's the five prime, three prime strand of, uh, of uh, the, the big Q allele. And you can see there's an A down here, the five prime, the three prime strand right here, little Q allele, you can see there's a G. So we have the AT and the GC base pair. So that's, that's the only difference between these two alleles. So let's assume the double strand break was put right here. Okay, let's say SPO11 did it. And this SPO11 went through and, and put a bunch of double strand breaks throughout the chromosomes. And it's, it's trying to initiate crossovers between some of them. And the double strand break is right here, relatively close to that single base pair, which differentiates the big Q allele and the small Q allele. So you can probably predict, you know, this is going to be the double strand break repair by homologous recombination mechanism. So you probably know what's going to happen next. Five prime end resection. So the five prime ends are trued away. And you can see we removed that T that was here. That's gone now. Uh, next step is going to be the single end invasion and D loop formation right here. So we can see single end invades. We got a three prime end here. So uh, we're going to get DNA synthesis here. And then this, we're going to see the second end invasion right here where this searches the D loop and looks for a match. Okay, here we have the replication occurring here. Uh, not, uh, the strand synthesis right here, and then we have synthesis occurring up here. Now you can see that you you know this used to be a T, right? Because this strand right here should be paired with the A, and now it copied this G in the donor template. And the C that is normally part of the don donor template, but it's in the displacement loop now. Well, it's still there. So you might be starting to see why gene conversion is possible or how it might be possible. So the next step, what, what's gonna happen? Well, okay, somehow, you know, this is, we're not really clear, sure how this happens, but somehow this is displaced, it anneals with the other end of the recipient. 
DNA molecule. And we get the double holiday junction formation. I should also point out, right, so this anneals up here, synthesis, we get ligation right here. Same thing happens over here. This synthesis keeps happening and eventually we get ligation over here. So just the stand, just the DSBR mechanism that we've talked about a few times so far. So we have our double holiday junction structure right here that needs to be resolved by the endonucleases. And we could have branch migration occurring, which we talked about at the end of the last video. But we have a problem, right? So this is a normal base pair, G and C, but this is not. There's a mismatch. And we're about to start learning about mismatch repair processes. This is, a, this is allowed, right? Um, I'm not exactly sure what the hydrogen bonding pattern would be between there, but the cell would not be happy with it. The, if any bonds are forming between A and C, the cell is going to notice something is wrong, and eventually it's going to fix either this one or this one. But before we get to that, let's resolve this structure. And let's say it's resolved just like this right here. We don't need to worry about crossovers or non-crossovers for, for learning about gene conversion. So this one down here... Okay, this looks good. This looks good. I think this was the small Q allele. So, okay, so there's gonna be no conversion here. It started out as a Q, stays as a Q. This right here, the recipient, let's say the recipient was, was the big Q allele. But it exits the DSBR process with a mismatch right here. Now that's gonna be repaired in, in one of two ways, either this A is going to be switched to a G, which would mean the big Q allele is turned to a small Q allele, or this C is going to be turned to a T, which would keep the big Q allele as a big Q allele. So you can see gene conversion would result if this A was changed to a G by the mismatch repair process. So mismatch repair is a whole other mechanism we haven't talked about yet. Uh, but when mismatch repair fixes the mismatch that results from repair of the double strand break, it could lead to gene conversion. Now, you can imagine another situation. Let's say if the uh, we could go through this process again, where the Q allele, the chromatid carrying the small Q allele was the recipient. And then we might see, okay, well, the small Q allele might be converted to a big Q allele. So the other uh, scenario can happen. Uh, either way, this process can result in a situation where um, a, a heterozygous individual with a big Q allele and a small Q allele, after meiosis, instead of having two big Qs and two small Qs, two small Qs, gene conversion can result in three big Qs and one small Q, or one big Q and three small Qs. Again, these are rare. Most of the time, I don't even know a percentage, just say 99.9% .9 of the time, this is gonna be the result of meiosis. But occasionally, we can see something like this. And when we see something like this, it's almost always a result of gene conversion. Okay, so I hope you understand gene conversion. And uh, please let me know if you have any questions. There are some problems on gene conversion in the lecture 18 notes.